Hello and welcome to The Telescope. Every week we bring you a fresh insight from the biggest car market in the world. Lamborghini reportedly said their first battery electric vehicle won't be ready until 2028. If you're impatient, want to have a preview of what an electric Lamborghini could look like, then I think this Hi-Fi Z can give you a pretty good idea. Yes, it's called Hi-Fi. It's a luxury Chinese EV brand positioned even higher than Neo. Its average selling price is about eighty to ninety thousand dollar. This Hi-Fi Z is its second production model. Their first production car attempt is an SUV crossover that is a bit over the top. The rear doors open like this. I understand that for clients to pay that much money for a new brand with no heritage, it has to have some wow factors. While it's definitely got that, it feels very first generation. The rear seats suffer from the same problem as the Tesla Model X. The outlandish rear doors eat away the strength of a normal full-width roof provides. To compensate, the central portion of the roof has to be beefed up. So the rear passengers feel kind of separated by this thick beam in the middle. And when the doors are closed, even with the glass opening, passengers can still feel a bit claustrophobic. Plus, the infotainment is pretty clunky. It just doesn't feel like a very polished product. But if you're asking for presence and a cool factor, it's already got it. Now onto the second model, the Hi-Fi Z. While retaining the attention-grabbing looks, it's also got the performance. It has two motors, 672 horsepower, 820 newton meters of torque, 0 to 100 kph acceleration is done in 3.8 seconds. It also has rear-wheel steering. On some short tracks, this Hi-Fi Z's lap time claim is very close to the Tesla Model 3 performance. So, it has some moves. On range, it has a massive 120 kilowatt hour battery, giving it 702 km CLTC. That's roughly 580 km WLTP and about 310 miles in EPA. And I think styling wise, it kind of works. It's low and wide. It's kind of the car that can easily fit into a superhero movie. The rear is quite busy. You might wonder with all of these going on, how can you see out of the bag? Well, you cannot. It uses a digital center mirror, so they can go even crazier on styling. So onto the performance of the Hi-Fi Z. I said it kind of looks like a Lamborghini. Does it have the dynamics to back it up? Well, at least from the headline numbers, it kind of does. 672 horsepower, 3.8 seconds acceleration to 100 kph, and air suspension, continuous damping control, and rear wheel steer. So it's got all the hardware necessary to make this car kind of a weapon on the road. Chassis setting wise, I think this is one of the sportiest car I've ever driven that's come out of a Chinese brand. Even in a comfort mode, it's I wouldn't say it's not comfortable, but it's definitely still biased towards sportiness. Throttle pedal calibration, I like it a lot because it gives you the suggestion that this car has a lot of performance, even at gentle acceleration or at low speed. Brake pedal, it works for me. I like a very positive brake pedal, but I had heard from other people that they find this to be a little bit too nervous for their liking. Dynamically, this car is difficult to judge on public roads because this car is so sporty and the performance ceiling is that high and you can only access that much on public roads. I can only say at normal speed, there's no apparent deficiency to speak of. It's very difficult to get this car misbehave on public roads. Ideally, I need more mileage and preferably on a racetrack to properly find out the limit of this car but it also tells you on public roads if you are just going to do let's say traffic light grand prix it's got the power it's going to do the job and at least the car is well supported but there's one thing i can say is this steering wheel first of all it's small that is good for dynamic driving however at this three o'clock and nine o'clock position there are these hard points that kind of prevents me to have a proper grip on the wheel there are pedals behind the steering wheel, but they are for um, drive mode selection and also regen. It's kind of complicated to use, but over time you will get used to it. The bigger improvement is on the interior. The infotainment from being very clunky in generation one suddenly becomes very smooth and responsive. All the animations are done in high frame rate and beautifully detailed. 
Part of the reason is the hardware. The Hi-Fi Z now runs on a Qualcomm 8155 chip. Part of it is also the software. I'm told these models are running on the Unreal Gaming Engine, the same engine powering popular games like the PUBG Mobile. I have to say, this is the biggest generational leap on any infotainment I have ever seen. This Hi-Fi Z, while looks as cool as a supercar, also has a certain level of supercar silliness. I have told you about the rear view mirror. The seating position, especially the rear, feels like you're sitting on the floor. The car, while being massive in size, has a boot that is even smaller than my Volkswagen ID3. But all these are kind of forgivable if you like the styling. It has that kind of Lamborghini swagger about it. The great thing about this Hi-Fi is that it is already available on the market today unlike the Lambo, which won't come out at least for another four years. While it is expensive, it is nowhere near as expensive as a real Lambo. I mean, sure, if you want to pick bones, instead of the triple chamber air suspension you normally see on a Lamborghini, it only has a single chamber air suspension. It doesn't have the 48 volt anti-roll system, but it is also charging only a quarter of the Urus selling price in China, or one third of its selling price in Europe. And the Lambo, when it eventually comes out in 2028, I suspect won't be that much faster than this Hi-Fi Z. Oh, this car gets a lot of attention. Almost every time we get out of the car, someone is checking it out or asking us what it is. So, I think, as strange as it may sound, this 90,000 euro Hi-Fi Z actually represents pretty good value for money. That is all from the telescope today. If you enjoy this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.